Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will discuss the programming features of a PLC. What kind of programming we, that we can use for a PLC? Normally, we have three kinds of programming languages. Before proceeding further in this video, please subscribe my channel so that you can get a notification for every new video. First one is known as ladder language. It is uh, written in this way. This is I 0.0, I 0.1. These are its input side. M 10.0 this is output side is represented with the coil and the input side are represented with these buttons this is the most important language which is used widely all over the world everywhere nowadays programming is almost 99 percent is constructed in the little language there are two programming types one of them is functional block, block diagram fpd it is previously used it was used previously but it, it was very complex language it has its programming in this way first function block and the second function block when this function block performs some function on the inputs and this also performs some function on the inputs the output of these two blocks goes to the final block and it also performs a function on those inputs and then generates an output this was a complex process and for lengthy programming this that was not that was not applicable another programming language was sequential function chart SFC. It was stepwise. It works in steps. Initial step after when the transition one step one becomes active. Step two after when step one is completed, it goes to step uh, initial step is completed. It goes to step one. When transition two fires, step two becomes active. In the second step, when the transition three fires, the procedure ends. In this way, it goes step by step. One step is completed, then the other step can be proceeded. This was also a lengthy process and it takes time. Therefore, it is now it is almost obsolete. No one is using it. But in some features, nowadays PLCs have some features in which we can convert the letter language into FBD and we also can convert the letter language into SFC. Therefore, as per requirement, when we need the other programming languages we can convert one language to the other Ladder logic is the main programming method that is used for PLCs it is visual and symbolic method that resembles relays logic diagram Ladder log logic has been developed to copy relay logic to reduce amount of retaining needed for entire in for engineers and trade people Ladder language is the most advanced method to use to program a PLC it takes very less time it can generate input to the output in very short time. It takes almost 16 milliseconds to convert an input to the output. It is a very renowned and mostly one widely used method for PLC programming. Power rail for any PLC for, for ladder language consists of these type of two rails. One is positive and the other is negative. In between these two rails, we construct our program. This symbol is used for normally closed contacts. This symbol is used for normally open context and this is the coil or output. These, these symbols are used for the inputs and this symbol is used for the output. Or it, is, it is also known as the coil. In some ways, it is uh, in some uh, PLCs, it is shown with the brackets and some in some PLCs, it is shown, shown with this kind of circle. Power flow when the input device is on. When it is normally open, then current can't flow through it. When it is normally closed, current can flow through it. In this way, it is now normally open. Current can't flow through it. This position is known as normally closed and current can easily flow through it. It is known as normally closed. This is normally open and this is normally closed. Ladder logic is constructed in this way. This is, this is a power rail which is positive and this is the negative power rail in between we have this is input button and this is output the power flows from this rail to this button when this button button is turned on the power flows to the motor and this is the negative side of the, this power rail therefore after switching this button on this motor will become on this is normally closed this contact is placed in normal close normally closed position if he does not change its condition the lamp will remain on when we turn this switch on the lamp will become off it works inversely to this button this button is pressed on it it becomes on 
when this button is turned on it becomes off when motor is on this button will become off because this this is the contact of this motor in the closed contact when the consider this motor as a relay when the re, this relay is energized these this is its normally closed contact after when a relay energizes its normal closed contact becomes normally open and normal open contact becomes normally closed so when this motor is energized this contact will be open and this contact will be closed because this is normal open contact so when it is energized lamp will be off and this lamp on them will be on latching is a term for a self maintaining circuit this is a latch circuit how this works this is normally open con uh, button this is normally close button this is the contact of this motor it means this motor is a relay output is a relay type this is a relay and this is the contact of relay when we press this button on it is already in the on position normally close the power flows from this rail to the motor and motor is energized when motor is energized this contact will come closed power can flow from this side to and from this side is this is an another path in which power can flow to the motor so when we want to turn off this motor we can't stop from this this button because when we turn this button off this is another way this is providing power to the motor therefore we this button becomes irrelevant when motor is in the run position we need to stop this button when we turn this button off or when when we press this button uh, on then it disconnects because it is connected in nerve closed condition it disconnects the power from both sides from here and from this way too and motor turns to off and operation normally it has two inputs a and b and one output when both the inputs are on output will be on when one of the inputs a or b becomes zero output will be, output will be zero this is our operation and in which it is it has two inputs in the end operation we have two inputs in the series with output and in this case we, we have two inputs which are in parallel when this put input is on either this or this output will be on when both the inputs are off this is zero this is zero output will be zero this is one this is zero or this is one this is zero output will be on therefore for to turn the output off you need to turn off both inputs either one input or both our inputs when becomes on the output will be on this whole thing is known as rung this whole thing is known as rung this kind of uh, the, this is first rung and in this in this way when we write a program in the second line that this is known as the second rung and third run and four run in this way program proceeds downward not operation works in this way input is connected connected in normal closed condition because when we press the button on this switch becomes off and output will be zero it means when we turn the switch on in input one output will be zero on input zero output will be one it is also known as inverter it inverts the input when input is zero output is one when input is one output will be zero these are the logic gates that we will discuss in detail first is the latch program that i have already discussed in the previous slide this is your and gate which is also we have discussed earlier these are the inputs when we turn this input on output will be on when turn this uh, input when turn this input on output will be off when this is turned on this contact of the output this is consider this is as a relay when this is energized this will be closed and therefore when it is turned on power can flow from this way and from this way too therefore when we turn this output on, off we need to turn this button off we can't stop from this button this is for start this is for stop and and gate we need to have connected both inputs in series either of the input x0 or x1 is turned off output will be off and both the, when both the inputs are on output will be on and in the same way or get both the inputs are connected in parallel position when input x2 or x3 either one is on output will be on when both the inputs are off output will be off this is nand gate it works oppositely to the 
end gate when n and the end gate when the inputs given to the end port end gate have a one output this will have inversely output its output will be zero it means that the end gate both the inputs are one output will be, will be one for this nand gate when both the inputs are one output will be zero for the and gate input one is zero other is one output will be zero for this when and one input is zero other is one output will be one and this is this is nor gate which is working inversely oppositely to or gate this is or gate for which when both the inputs are turned off output will be off and for nor gate when both the inputs are turned on uh, when both the inputs are turned off output will be one it is working oppositely to the or gate for or gate we need to have one input turned on then output will be one for this nor gate when one input is on other is off the output will be zero because both the inputs are connected in series so when in or gate we have both inputs in parallel and in nor gate we have both inputs are in series and also they are normally closed same case is here for and gate both inputs are in series and are normally open and for and gate both inputs are in parallel and both are in normally closed condition here this is plc ladder program for x or gate and this is plc ladder program for x nor gate x nor gate opposite to x or gate here x nor gate you can see that when both inputs are one this is one this is one or when both inputs are zero this is turned to zero this is turned to zero for the same input x nor gate its output will be one if we went to when you give one to this the it will convert here to zero then you provide when you take one here it will provide zero here so this line will be on when you wiggle zero here and zero here it will conversely it one show one here and one here therefore on zero are one and the inputs are same x zero and x one zero here zero here output will be one one here one here output will be one and conversely when it is zero it is one is one or zero output will be zero it means for same inputs output will be one for different inputs output will be zero and this is opposite to that for same input output will be zero for different input output will be one different means when you give zero to x zero and one to x one so it means here you have provided zero it is now closed it will inversely take it and for zero input it will become one and here for zero input it will it will become one and for zero it will be zero here for zero input it will be zero for one it will become zero so for zero zero input output will be off for one one input output will be off it means for same input output will be zero here for same input x uh, when you give same input to x0 and x1 in xr case output will be 1 but x in n xr case when you provide same input to x0 and x1 output will not be 1 output will be off for different inputs when you provide 0 to x0 and 1 to x1 the output will be 1 therefore these two gates are also opposite to each other xr is working opposite to xnor xnor is working opposite to xor gate thank you so much for watching this video